Charlie? What's yes. the dad? Charlie yeah. Rooks, right? Yeah, because Rooks, because they kept using that date and name. Mr. Rooks. Hello, Mr. Rooks. <laughs> okay. I'll call him Dilf, because that's what he was. <laughs> oh, Dilf? Oh, uh, yeah. And they dad, you ha- like the fuck? <laughs> Did you really have to say it? <laughs> Did I not? <laughs> They were asking for it because the amount of times that he didn't That's have what every man says on, to another man, he was asking for it. When I say they, I mean the creators of the comic. Right. No, I get you. Uh, you're the comic expert. Is there usually that many half naked men in these comics? Uh, was it really half naked half the time? Okay. Obviously, you weren't paying attention to the good parts, but you already <laughs> know he has. I mean, he that- does take his shirt off randomly to put the, 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 the slathering all over his his body, which I was like, oh, yeah. I see where it might. And be when this. when the naked, I thought it was an old man, but it was an old woman was on top of him, and she stabbed him in the uh, abdomen. Oh, and, and blew that, that dust in his face. Yeah, yeah. And so, Real like though. you know, he's already gotten his wife pregnant twice, so you know he has potent dad nut. He <laughs> is very good looking. Like they knew what they were doing. He has the right kind of glasses, the right kind of stubble. Scott Snyder, I see you. Oh, I see what you're doing there. So this is Slashers, the home of your favorite podcast about your favorite horror media. I am Mikey, and joined with me is my colleague, co-host, and cohort, Lance. Um, hello. Yes, Lance, thank you for saying hello. That is our short little intro, because this is a YouTube-exclusive series called The Comic Chop. I was going to say The Chopping Mall. The Comic Chop, where we decided we wanted to talk about horror comics. Very excited. Welcome to the first episode. The first episode, I decided to bring to the table uh, a comic that I really enjoy called Witches. And just so you are aware, it's W-Y-T-C-H-E-S. There's no I in Witches. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of sad and funny at the same time. (laughs) Yes. Uh, But yeah, so Lance didn't, hasn't, well, he has now, but Lance didn't read this previously. I was a very gracious friend and co-host and cohort and sent him a copy. You know what I actually did for you, Lance? I ordered oh. two and I had them both delivered to my house because they were used. And I wanted to make sure that I sent you the nicer one. And I kept Aww. the one that had a little bit of a bend in the page. <laughs> nice. I didn't even notice. Yeah. I mean, so, like, that's, that's, well, you didn't notice really because yeah, for... there's exactly. That's why I sent you that one. Nice. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Also, this is a image, which is a great comic book company, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the first independents uh, started off by uh, Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, which Jim Lee actually now is with um, DC. He actually heads DC Comics now. Um, but also uh, Eric Larson. Uh I know I'm forgetting a couple other ones. I know I'm a horrible comic person. I was gonna say, you better list them. They're listening. Yeah, I know who they are. Um, well, if you know image, you know who they are. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm like the common person who likes comics, but a little bit more than the most, you know. Um, which is the same for Mikey as well. So <laughs> we're yeah. we're pretty good at what we want to do. I, you know, there's other really great independent ones like Boom. Um, would you consider Top Image Cow? independent? What's that? Would you consider Image independent? Uh, they are still technically to this day because uh, they actually give the um, the artists their own rights. They actually own their property. Uh, mm-hmm. Image uh, puts puts it out and does it all the time for them, like for like Walking Dead and stuff like that. So they own the rights of their thing. Where other comic books like Marvel and DC own what you make. Oh, that's so stupid. like, yeah. So like for example, uh, for, uh, Rob Liefeld actually is another. Uh, uh, creator from uh, image comics that uh co-owner or co-founder i guess it, co-founder mm-hmm. um but uh he created deadpool but oh, because cool. he created deadpool when he was working for marvel 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 owns it even though it was his idea and his creation he doesn't get any royalty right well i mean maybe he gets some royalty rights i don't know 
or it's this yeah it's like it's like the dude who uh made the big mac for mcdonald's like he made it for them and that's their their signature sandwich but other than the fact that him and his family gets free mcdonald's for life i think that's what he he got (laughs) he didn't get no money like it's just like it's like how much fucking mcdonald's could you really eat you know i I mean i guess you could eat a lot of it but i mean at the same time (laughs) you know like yeah, and especially they're like, actually, you should double up so your life ends a little faster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but image I comics with him. <laughs> I know, right? The cool thing about this show is, you know, when we announce what we're going to be reviewing, and we haven't reviewed that publisher before, we can give a little information on it. Image Comics is 32 years old, founded in 1992. Uh, by Eric Larson, Jim Lee, Rob Lee Field, Tom McFarlane, Wils- Wils or Wilsey, Portacio, Mark Silvestri, and Jim Valentino. As Lance said, the mm-hmm. artists Todd McFarlane, McFarlane, Rob Lee Field, and Jim Lee were all working for Marvel with Spider-Man, X-Force, and X-Men. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they kind of started to do their own thing. And if you think Lance's scariest story... Uh, Lance's story is scary about Marvel owning Deadpool, even though Mr. Life, uh, Lifefield. Lifefield, Lifefield created him. If you work for a company and you sign that paper in the beginning of your orientation, you should read it because more than likely it says <laughs> any invention you create at work within your tenure here is going to be owned by the company. I work in yeah. IT and it's commonly in there. Never actually seen it take place, but it's in there. With that said, yeah, uh, I know. I was like, I was like, sorry for the downer, folks. Yeah, <laughs> there's Real more things. downers to come. Yeah, I was gonna say I, again, Image is 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 a is a great company in that way. So like, uh, support those people and like Boom and a couple other ones. Like, well, like some of the hard ones that I suggested are on different ones. Um, and I, I think if you've seen our flyer that we should have up or we will have up probably with this as well. We posted um, it. Yeah, like uh, a lot of those ones are from uh, independent books, uh, corporation comic wise. Um, yeah, support them. They have yeah. great stories. Uh, they actually do horror. Uh, there is one, I think that I picked out that's actually on DC. That was actually decent. I uh, I don't really care for uh, a lot of DC Marvel. There are there are some really still good ones on that. The classic heroes that you all know, mm-hmm. but. We'll probably be more mostly in the independent genre of, of comics. Well, so here's the thing about comics. I got into comics because I was going to the comic book store. My stepdad was really big into the classic superheroes. I always felt that I can't just jump into Spider-Man because there's mm-hmm. how many knows God knows issues. And I'm not someone that can just be like, I'm just going to jump right in here. And you listen to people talk about the lore of, you know, or why Spider-Man's this way, how Gambit got his powers, whatever, whatever. And you're like, I have no idea where that is, what issue that is, but I know that. Oh, here you go. By the by the way, no spoilers. I'm not saying anything. Episode five. Have you seen X-Men 97 yet? I haven't seen it. Lance is going to be your guide to all things superhero lore your classic superheroes because when i was going to the comic book shop with my stepdad i was drawn to the horror comics and i'm not talking about like you know swamp thing i'm sure he's great you know gowns beautiful gowns swamp thing but (laughs) i liked the unhinged indie kind of like films like you know indie films Mm -hmm. they have less interference from the production i mean from the uh yeah the studio so you can kind of do more that you want to do Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, when that before that was a show, that was a comic, and I was really into it. So yeah. I'm going to be drawn to these indie smaller publishers because that's who is gonna do it. Like, I don't think DC or Marvel would have published the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they're like Nintendo. Nintendo took forever to find to release like a semi-adult uh video game because they're market was mainly towards children yeah, yeah. so you know we have the same kind of constraints with dc and marvel i like children's like comics and stories and stuff like that also but you know i'm a horror guy i'm gonna want the nasties and so 
with witches actually i remember when it came out because i used to work at a company and i didn't know about it but i sat next to two guys that were really good friends and they liked comic books and they were telling me about it and i was like cool so during lunch we would all get in one of their cars and go to the comic shop down the street and we'd go buy an issue so i actually have all the issues i have no idea why i didn't finish it because i didn't read the whole thing until we got the um the volume oh, and, the graphic novel yeah and so apparently i just read like the first three and i didn't realize that so i didn't <laughs> finish it until i got the whole issue or graphic novel and boy oh boy what a graphic novel it was <laughs> To kind of start, we have two main characters that we're going to be discussing. Charlie, who's the DILF, and Scout, <laughs> who is the anxiety-ridden daughter, teenager. How would you describe her? She's... I think a normal teenager who's not a part of the norm of everyday school life. Like, I mean, she doesn't give a shit. I mean, I don't know if she doesn't give a shit about, like popularity because almost every kid kind of does in some way but i think she's more of you know who i would put her as i i would put her as her own person i think she kind of reminds me of um me thanks with her mental <laughs> but... yeah no uh, uh uh what's the movie with uh elliot page hard candy oh you mean juno yeah juno okay. she kind of makes me think of a juno type character like where it's like She's weird. Yeah. She's got like, anxiety. She kind of like does her own thing. Yeah. But obviously you kind of realize with the bully scenario that obviously someone's there to like yeah. crush that. Yeah. And so with these episodes, we'll give minor spoilers probably that happen in the first part of the story. I don't want to give away anything that happens at the end, because if you do invest the time to read these, I do think this is worth it. It's, pretty good um but she has a little bit more anxiety than a regular teenager would because they have flashbacks to situations where she's like mm. and the dad is a comic comic book or uh he's he either writes novels or comics it's a comic book he writes a comic book um yeah i couldn't tell if he was an illustrator or he was a full-on writer and an illustrator because like because it showed like some pictures of him drawing and some people pictures of like i wasn't really too sure sure it's kind of cool because it was like it was kind of fun to watch a book of an actual illustrator from an indie kind of comic, yeah. you know, vibe doing something for a, it seemed like a major because he was getting shit from either his, was it his brother? brother? I, I think it, it was either his brother or like a really good friend that they call uncle, whatever his name was. Yeah, he, was yeah, also, yeah. he was also hot. Did you, did you realize that he disappeared from the storyline, by the way? Um, did yeah, you ex- not see what happened? Yeah, but I didn't know for sure. Like, exactly what happened happened like you guys yeah. can all read it and find out and make make your choices to see what actually happened to him or if he did it's up to interpretation because we don't know what happens to him but he yeah. is kind of not in the end <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, don't get too familiar with him <laughs> i mean he's hot i was hoping for some hot you know he jokes around with uh dilf charlie about making out on the stairwell mm-hmm. so i'm like yeah i like where this book's going no luck uh yeah. so um before we also start, you know, you talk about indie comics. This is written by Scott Snyder and illustrated by someone named Jock. Just Jock. I'm going to respect that. Uh, Scott Snyder. I saw that. I was like, I was like what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> if Scott Snyder sounds familiar, uh, he uh, he did work for DC Comics and he did American Vampire, uh, Batman, Swamp oh, Thing, Justin League. Yeah, I'm about to read that actually with my other friend. Uh, but yeah, so... <laughs> Okay, so this is what I will tell you. This is an interesting point, plot, plot, plot point. Scott has a bully, and this is actually kind of fucked up what happens. Not to the bully, but what the bully is making her do. When I first read this, I was like, that's ugly. And I don't mm. know if it was because this is my first time reading a comic. This was years ago when I read this, not like recently. And I remember being like, can they get this obscene? So she has a bully in high school and the bully is basically like beating her ass and Scout's tired of it. So she pulls a knife out and she's like, you're going to leave me alone. Well, the bully pulls a gun out and she's like, no, what you're going to do is you're going to stick the end of that knife inside of you while I videotape it. And I was like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
<laughs> All I can think about is that, that, that meme where that kid has the robot arm. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Like, me, 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 me. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. It's, I was like, that's intense. Like, even Dude. for a horror comic. That's what I love about I I love about indies and and an image that they brought that I mean they made it okay for people to like kind of write you know really good shit where you know you would never see this in DC or yeah or exactly uh but yeah so she goes to this new school and she starts getting feelings that something in the woods is calling her and you learn in the beginning that there are these entities large female entities called aid no called... <laughs> <laughs> not even here not even here to the vendors so. <laughs> like... she's she's living life she's having fun uh <laughs> these large female entities called witches and people pledge people to them basically we don't know how they do it yet we don't know what the, the trade-off is but essentially when your name is pledged to these witches they come and they get you and there's nothing you can do to stop it so the signs are there that she has been pledged. So now here's the thing I thought was kind of funny about that part, just to add, a, uh, I don't know how you felt about it, but like, I was wondering, see, like when they said pledge, I was like, well, that's kind of fucked. Cause anybody could just be like, your pledge, your pledge, your pledge. I fucking hate you. But then you find out later on, which is there's something they put in your food. There's like a, an actual it's a process. Yeah. Like there's an actual, like, I don't want to say poison, but it's, 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 it's something like a scent or yeah. like right or something and that it was like green it's either yeah. powder or whatever it's not as easy as like death note like you don't just write a name down and then yeah yeah exactly <laughs> which i was gonna say i was like i was like i, was like, I love that move uh, that, that anime but like but oh, it's yeah. kind of don't funny. say moving yeah yeah i know <laughs> oh my god well they did do a live action one i think that's one what i'm talking uh, about i was like yeah, that was also. not a good movie uh i want to give you the floor because i feel like you might be able to speak on this better than me but can you break down artwork and design and how you felt about it yeah honestly we have the book right here Ooh, Boom. show and tell um it's really uh man what's the best way to say this it it's cool because sometimes it's very clean-esque a lot of shadows um like sometimes it's very bright and then it seems like they try to use shadows and there's other times where it just seems very chaotic uh the bubbles sometimes are a little fuller you know what i mean like in yeah. here right there it just seems a little bit like uh cluttered which kind of sucks a little bit sometimes i enjoy being a little bit cleaner like that um uh the colors are pretty cool i mean like the scenes when they're doing kind of like like a light scene or something like this, like even in this right here. Yeah. You know, it was really pretty. Uh, I don't know who did the inking because that's a thing, obviously, with comics. You know, you have an inker, an actual drawer, and then obviously story and everything like that. And then uh, putting the bubbles in and wording it. But, I mean, like sometimes right here, like this right here, it's very chaotic and you almost don't even know what's going on. Yeah, and actually, I was going to talk to you about that because I don't know if that's considered the inker. But the cool thing about this issue, guys, or this volume, if you get the graphic novel, is at the end, they have a little write-up, but then they also show you panels and how they put the panels together. And the final step is like almost like a filter with like the orbs. I don't mm. like those. Because oh, yeah. when it gets convoluted, like what you said, it gets it's a little messy. There's some books... I would like just love in black and white. Like honestly, yeah. This right here looks beautiful. Just and it, and it says so much more. I mean, especially the scene in in one of these scenes where they're having a moment and it's like that. It's like sometimes just the whatever the inker has done almost doesn't need color. Like it, it's it's crazy how like it's like getting one of the old school uh, Ninja Turtle books. Because in the beginning stages, when they first started off, it was literally just black and white, um, and and then later on, it was like I actually I think it was mostly black and white, and then they they all had red <laughs> red uh, masks. It's the graphic novel is six issues, so it's pretty short. The way that it ends, I don't think it needs more. Our wonderful co-host uh, Jason said that he's waiting for the second volume to come out, but there are no more issues, so. I don't know if there's mm. plans on any more. 
There actually is a special. We may have an interesting development in the studio today, folks. Um, mm. There is a one-off called The Witch's Bad Egg. It's a prequel, but it also serves as a standalone story. Um, they're adapting it into a television series. That makes sense. So, I mean, that'd be cool. cool. Yeah, I'd be down. I can see it easily being a series. I, You know what I mean? And especially if you uh, dive into how this even began as a thing. I, I'd honestly almost would hope they'd push it back to an older time. Because yeah. in the very beginning part of this book, you actually get even further back I think it's time. like the 20s or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can be honest, if there was a volume two, would you be interested in reading it? Yeah, no, honestly, like, it, it it's a cool storyline. I mean, and, and again, it's like, I don't say there's like a happy ending or anything like that, because <laughs> I don't, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But at the same time, uh, it definitely left you kind of wanting. So that's always a good uh, sign for me. You know what I mean? It's like, if I got to it something and it was over and I'm like, cool, I'm gonna put this book away and throw it to the side and never look at it again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you always want to... Uh, uh, I don't. I wouldn't say I wouldn't reread it, but I would definitely tell somebody else to read it for sure. Yeah, it's not like you know horribly disturbing. Like it's not like a. I'm not going to say anything, but it is a sad ending, and I don't. Or know. a happy ending, depending on what kind of person you are. Um, <laughs> it's like, uh, it could, it could. My thing is, it could have definitely been uh, avoided. We just mm. needed to slime someone and possibly i'm gonna bleep this out and just book it out with your with your because uh <laughs> that's what i would have done i mean uh, what what uh the dad ends up giving the daughter idealize to do at the end was pretty fucking classic <laughs> fuck you bitches yeah so do you consider these graphic novels or paperback? So based off of our conversations, because you're kind of my only insight into this environment, okay. um, I refer, it's easier for me to refer to individual comic books as issues and the graphic novel as a volume. Okay. Um, the one that I sent you is a paperback because yeah. as you've taught me, a hardback is more expensive and the bigger collection yeah they'll usually go out of their way to make it a little bit more uh just badass and more fun and and, yeah. and like regal <laughs> hardback is what i bought for nail biter so i'm excited oh for yeah, yeah yeah well i think you guys what we're trying to say is we recommend this book if you're into it so if you like some spooky ooky stories about a small time town that is even though someone says it's a little long it's only six issues he can get over it uh give it a read <laughs> let us know what you like if you liked it um also like and subscribe to our videos uh in our channel we're going to be posting these uh they're not going to be as long or as in detail as the video is it part. there mm. is it there we don't where know where will you put it <laughs> i know where i'll put it but oh, there it is <laughs> with that said we hope you enjoyed the episode let us know uh, your thoughts and prayers and let us know if there's a comic out there that you really like that you think we should read so yeah. w- without further ado listen to our main show wherever podcasts are available and then stick to youtube so you can see our beautiful faces talking about beautiful comic books yeah. all right everybody have a good evening goodbye don't die and read trash Die! I love trash. No, that's why he likes me. <laughs> <laughs>